everyone, and welcome to week one of the What's Your Why series. I'm your host, T, um, and today we are going to have a very, very special guest on the show. Um, and of course, this is One Faith Radio, and you know how we get down on One Faith Radio. Um, the whole purpose of One Faith is to show unity in the body of Christ. Um, and today's guest, you know, he does just that. Um, when I prayed and asked God, you know, which direction he wanted me to take with this series and who he wanted me to start with, you know, he, um, he put this guy in my in my thoughts um, to start the series off or kick the series off with him, um, mainly because of our conversation and just how timely the conversation was. Um, and as you'll see, as we get through the episode and as we see everything that's going on, as you'll see everything that's going on, it's like, man, this brother is bringing some heat and some nuggets. So today's guest is none other than Pastor Felix Petaway um, of Ivory Hill Baptist Church in Enfield, North Carolina. Uh, for those who don't know where Enfield, North Carolina is, it's right outside of Rocky, um, Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Um, and man, we had a great dialogue. And you could tell, you know, we have a lot in common. You know, it was just a great time. And this is our initial meeting. Um, and I feel that a great friendship was built off of this. And a lot of the interviews that you'll see over the next um, 11 or 12 weeks um, will show that, you know, this is an initial meeting between me and these um, pastors and ministers. Um, and we, you know, built a great solid friendship off of this. So I'm excited about, you know, releasing this series to you guys, uh, releasing everything about what's your why, because I truly believe that this series is really going to bless a lot of people. It's really going to um, bless um, those who are really trying to find or search for their why or their purpose in life. Um, this whole series is all about that. Helping you find your purpose, helping you find your why, helping you find your currency. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Pastor Eckliff. Um, Helping you find your currency in life so that you can um, understand what you're supposed to be doing in this season. You know, it's a tough season that we're in with the uh, coronavirus um, and, you know, racial tensions are high. Um, a lot of things are going on. But I truly believe, I wholeheartedly believe that God has a plan and purpose for you. Um, it's just up to you to tap into it, to find what that is. Um, and, of course, tap into into what God has for you to do. We all have a purpose. We all have a calling in this life. Um, some may not be, you know, pastors, preachers, uh, ministers, you know, whatever, but whatever your purpose is in life, I pray that this series help you find your purpose, find your why, uh, and most importantly, um, help you get, you know, a better understanding of who God is, um, most importantly of all. So, <clears throat> as you can tell, um, there's cologne and stuff in the back. I'm, I'm shooting this in my closet. I want to make this as real and raw and authentic as possible. A lot of the episodes that I that I um, shoot is in a closet. But you know what? You know, I'm, I'm thanking God for where we are right now and where he's going to take us in the future. You know, we're, we're in the closet, but I'm not in the closet like that or anything like that. <laughs> like that. But, you know, I'm excited about where God is taking us. God's hand is definitely on this ministry. Um, no attack, no thing that the devil or the enemy can do can stop what God has already put in motion. So, without further ado, um, please open up your hearts and minds to receive the words of Pastor Felix Petaway. Um, I'm, I'm going to start it off with scripture. Colossians 2. Um, Paul gives a statement to the church at Colossae, and he says, my purpose or my why is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. My why is to be sure that my calling is not in vain, but also to be sure that I am living my call. Yeah. I don't, I don't want, I want to make sure that if I'm saying one thing, I'm also doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. that's kind of rare um my why is to be an encourager an influencer my why is to uh impact lives but also to not just tell them a sermon but to show them that i, I know how it is to hurt but i know my why is to still be strong in spite of what i'm going through not to be fake because I, I cry just like everybody else. I bleed just like everybody else. But I, I know how to be strong. I know how to endure through what I'm going through. 
I like I like that what you said um, about um, no one hurt, knowing um, how to deal and navigate through that and how to, um, and basically how that kind of fuels your why, uh, fuels your purpose um, to, to ministry. I think that a lot of people this day and age, you know, we, we're in an interesting season where a lot of people have or is dealing with hurt, church hurt in a different way or in a different light. And for the most part, I think that a lot of people don't know how to really navigate through it how to overcome it. And a lot of times you see it cripples people um, and it keeps them from, you know, being all that God has called and created them to be because they're so focused on the hurt that has taken place. Um, may have been way back when, or may have been yesterday, may have been a couple weeks ago, but you know, we can't focus on that hurt. We can't allow that to drive our motivations for life or to keep us from God at the end of the day. Cause at the end of the day, our motivation for life is to go, is to go to heaven and see Jesus. Uh, and that be our main focus, our main drive, no matter what anyone does to us or says about us, you know, it should, our main drive and focus should always be that, Hey, I'm living to live again. I'm living to go see Jesus. I don't care what you say or what you do. You know, you may have hurt me in the past, but you know, what's coming in the future is, is much better than what I've been through. Right. And what is coming is as long as I continue to live right and keep God first, you know, what's coming is going to be heaven. And I think that a lot of people miss that, um, that mark or just forget that all the way around because they just so fo focused on hurt. Um, so I love that. I love that a lot. And that, that word mark is, is amazing because that's something else Paul says. I press yeah. toward the mark of a higher call. That means, yeah. It isn't about the rewards here on earth, even though we want what we get. But God is talking, he, Paul is talking about us getting, he want to press toward the mark of getting to heaven. Exactly. And, and if we're not trying to do that to get to heaven, then you need to stop doing it. Exactly. Because yeah. heaven is, as you said, heaven is the prize of the high calling. You know, we can do, we can look for houses, cars, um, the great blessings here on earth that God has for us. Mm -hmm. But none of that stuff matters when you die. When nope. you die you go and see Jesus, he ain't going to ask you uh, how much money you had, how many offers you raised, uh, how many accolades you had, none of that. The only thing he's going to look at and say, he's going to he's gonna ask you, do I know you? Yeah, <laughs> First of that's, all. It. that's it. <laughs> I don't want him to say, I don't know you, and I don't want him to say, depart from me. That's the right. two, oh, no, no, sir. Yeah. So, well done. <laughs> all I want to hear is well Just done. like a steak, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in and just yeah. give me my wings and let me go. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that a lot. Thank so, you, sir. Uh, what is your testimony for a salvation? <laughs> um, as a young boy, uh, I've been in church all my life as well. Um, I did a seven year stint away from church, and I think God saw that it was best for me to get back in it. Uh, when I say that, I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. Um, as a ch child, 12, 13, I was drug to receive Christ. Mm. Uh, grandma, auntie pulled me by the ear. You're going, you're going at 12 because this is the time that people say you're supposed to be saved. Right. Um, I really didn't have a true salvation experience. Um, I would say until I was 14, 15, mm. um, where the Holy spirit took over my body. Mm. Um, God spoke to me and told me to submit. I was young. I, I mean, they say I was older than what I seen, what I my age, but I was submitting to God because I knew God had a call on my life. I just didn't know what the call was. Mm -hmm. So I, I answered the call of salvation, if you will, um, when I was about 14. And I had a seven year stint where I was in the, in the military for seven years in the Marine Corps. And I didn't go to church. Not one, I think I made a maybe went to church two times in seven years while I was in. Yeah. Um, but I was fighting. Yeah. Um, and God got my attention. I, and I will talk about that later, too. Yeah. But my salvation is because I understood and God touched me so deeply that he said, it's your turn now. Yeah. And I have greatness for you. I just didn't see it. Wow. A lot of people want their greatness right then, right? but they're not going to get it right then because there's some steps to get to that. So, That's good. yeah. Yes, sir. That's good. Uh, 
That, that is so profound because I think so many people, when they think about salvation, they think that, oh, I have to be perfect. I have to be 100% clean. God wants me, like, squeaky clean when I come to um, Christ. But that's not even the case. Like, God wants you just as you are. He mm -hmm. wants you and your messed up self, you know, just as bad as the world wants you and your messed up self. And I think mm -hmm. that Go ahead. one thing that you were saying is, like, you know, a lot of people, you know, they run from salvation for a long time and they'll just run from God. And, and they not even thinking about it, you know, when you do that, it's kind of like the prodigal son, you go out and you do your own thing and you just live life vicariously, however you want to do it. And it's like, it almost gets to the point where when you have done all that you could do <laughs> and you sitting on the ground and you sitting somewhere, just don't know how nor you got there. And it's like, God, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. And no matter how many how many times you ask that question, he's always going to be like, I got you. Just come right. on. I got you. And, and Elder, one of the things that, one of the portions of that story that I love and it, it sticks out to me, the text says he came to himself. Yes. When he came to himself, he was realizing, wait a minute, I done messed up. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, God still welcome, welcome to me. And so, man, yeah. And like it's it's like no matter how bad you mess up, that's 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 what grace is all about. That's what mercy and grace is all about. It doesn't matter how bad you mess up, what you do, you can you can still be saved and messed up. I, that's my testimony. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> sir. You could be in a church all your life and you still mess up, and God will still usher you in. It's kind of like with David. Uh, <laughs> yes. Since we since we on the, the topic of entanglements. <laughs> David had an entanglement with Bathsheba. And it's just so funny because, like, you know, we, we look at David being this great man of God, this great leader, this great king. But we overlook, you know, his fall. Well, I don't say we overlook, but we overlook the severity of his fall. And I think that with David, he knew he fell. And he mm -hmm. understood how he, he grieved that. Mm -hmm. Because as you, you're a pastor, you know, as you study the entire book of Psalms, <laughs> uh huh. He is writing the entire time, Lord. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's other thing. That's other instances that he's talking about. But majority of it, he's really trying to fight his way back mm -hmm. to that great statue that he, um, that that God had him in before he did that that great sin. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, we it's so interesting. We're in a new a new covenant to mm -hmm. where it doesn't matter what we do. And it, it, that's just so, that's just the most beautiful thing about God. We can commit that same grievous act, that same grievous sin, and God will still love us and treat us the same way that he did when we first came to him. Like, heaven is still there mm -hmm. right now. We, we can counsel ourselves from certain things at certain times, yes, but it's always going to be there. It's always, God is always going to be there. So I'm sorry if I took a... No, you fine. No, sir, you good. <laughs> We took a turn. We just went everywhere. This is a conversation, so we did. Yes, sir. Exactly. <laughs> My wife get on me all the time. She's like, you talk too much. You don't let them talk enough. <laughs> you good, man. <laughs> to the wife. I got to listen to the producer. She the producer of the show. She okay. Okay. <laughs> that's, her, that's her title. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you were called from uh, to ministry, did you answer right away? Um, and if not, why did you ignore the call and what prompted you to eventually acquiesce or eventually answer the call? Um, when I was called, no, I didn't. Um, so I said I was saved around 14. I was called into the ministry at 15. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually answer the call until 2003. Mm -hmm. That was 1989 now. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> so from 1989 to 2003, wow. I ran because it was about fun, foolishness, and fun. Mm. I'm just, that's just me. I love to have a good time. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be in the ministry. I didn't want to be seen up there in the pulpit or wherever it is I preach at. Mm. I didn't want to be seen in that sense. Now, when I, when I was called, again, I had been one year from being saved. I'm like, God, really? You want me? I didn't need, I looked at the caller ID and didn't even answer it. 
So in 2003, I had a mild heart attack. Wow. Um, had finished out the military, did seven years in the military from 93 to 2000. It was uh, in barber school, cut, got, going, get ready to cut hair. And had a, had a mild heart attack in Wilson, North Carolina. Mm. Left this barber school in Wilson. My, my friend got me to Rocky Mount Nash General. They kept me there for about two, three hours, said I had a mild heart attack. They shipped me to Greenville. Wow. Got to Greenville. I stayed there three days. First night, everybody was in the room. Second night, everybody was there. My mom, everybody. Um, the third day, boy, you about to get me to tear. Um, the third day, I'm, I'm alone wow. in the room. The other two days, there's people everywhere in there. That, that third day, I'm in the room. And all the lights in the hallway go out. All the lights in my room go out. There's just one light over my head. And the spirit said to me, do I have your attention now? God. And all I said was yes. Mm. People don't understand. You can run from the call, but God will get your attention eventually. Come on. And when he got, he gets your attention. Sometimes he had to break you down shotgun style mm. to show you that he has the power and you don't, man, I was doing any and everything. I don't even want to go into that. Then you'll be able to look back at my history. <laughs> I was doing any and everything I could think I was big and bad enough to do. If people knew, if people saw me then compared to now, they probably would vote me out of my church, but God, so y'all, y'all about to get me happy right now. God saved me from me. Mm. And that's, that's how I'm here now. Been preaching since 2003. Been mm. pastoring since, uh, I've been pastoring right at a total of eight and a half years. Wow. Been at Ivory Hill for going in my seventh year. So I thank God for saving me from me. Um, but 1989 to 2003, I ran. Yeah, that, that is, man, That that's powerful. I, I got chills. I don't know if you can see my skin, but I got chills because it's like, I, I, it's like you, you run for so long. And it's so funny. I, I, I didn't have a heart attack or anything like that, but it's like our stories are somewhat similar because mm-hmm. when I initially received the call to preach, I ran because the same reason that you, I didn't want to be that deep. Mm-hmm. Dude. I didn't want to be, I ain't want to wear suits all the time and be right. walking around and be all super deep. God bless you. You know, I can't hold a conversation without, you know, receiving some sort of, some sort of accolade. I just didn't want to be that guy. And that's why I, I ran from it for so long. And it just takes me, it, it literally takes me back to that moment when, and I was sharing this story with um, another guy, um, another um, a minister. And he's, he um, dealt with depression and suicide mm-hmm. and we, shared that same story and I was sharing with him my story of depression and suicide and I told him that you know it was literally when in that moment when I was ready to just let it go I was just ready to quit it was like God literally stepped in and said everything is going to be all right get up and it took with your story just took me back to that moment and it was like God that it's powerful because people don't understand the power of God. No. no. And they don't have any fear for God. At all. And it's and like. It, it takes a time for God to knock, for Jesus to knock you off your beast, to, to close your eyes and then open them up. Right. I think of every day for it, man. Yes. I, I do too. It's like you, 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 when you find that, when you when you see God in that light, mm-hmm. and it's why it's why it bothers me so much to see people who have turned away from God, because it's like when you have experienced God like that, there's no way that you can just turn from God in that moment. It's impossible. Like God has literally showed Himself to you. Now understand. Like you said earlier, too, it's not, I've not been perfect. Mm -hmm. But people want you to be perfect. Yes, they do. All God wants you to do is have progress. That's it. He wants you to do better. Yep. He ain't looking for you because he know the blemishes that you've had. He know what mess you've done, what we've done. 
Mm-hmm. But it's so it's also, daily us repenting. Exactly. That's the point I was about to say. That's exactly what I was about to say. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. God, it, man, your testimony is powerful, Pastor. I, that, bless you, that's powerful. God be the glory. Yes. I, I pray that it blesses many as they hear it because, you know, so many people, they think that, you know, like I said earlier, they think they have to be perfect when honestly, you know, God will get your attention. Mm-hmm. Um, when I knew that I was called, God got my attention. Um, and, and and then even now, like he shows me, you know, this is all that I had for you had you answered the call when I initially told you to. Right. I, he shows me blatantly. He was like, you see this person doing that? That what that should have that would have been you if you had answered the call. Mm-hmm. And I know it. And I and it's just like <laughs> but at the same time, God is so gracious and love. It goes back to the point I said earlier. He's still gonna get put you right back in the place where he had you at and and or uh, he has planned for you from the beginning. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. That's just how God's grace and mercy is. Like I don't know why the prodigal son just keeps sticking with me, but it's going back to that moment, no matter how far he was gone, when he came back in, his father gave him a ring. Right. And threw him the biggest party. Right. And told him, come on in. Like, God, all right. All right. And stop. people are going to hate that because they've been there the whole time, like the brother. Uh-huh. The they've whole been there the whole time. time and the you, whole you're time. reaping benefits after you've been gone? Really? Mm-hmm. So you have those, and see, that's something that I plan on dealing with in my Bible study this week, is, is anger. How anger can mess up a relationship that it shouldn't even have to mess up. Oh, that's deep. It shouldn't. I think that people, people focus so much on the, the cause of the anger mm-hmm. that they forget they forget God in the moment, of course, because you know when you're angry, you're just not thinking about God at all. You're just thinking right. about how that person did you, what what happened in that situation, and you just leave God in that moment out because you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all it's and for some reason we always put God on the back burner when that is the time when we need to have God in the forefront of everything um, that we're going through. He needs to be in control of that because if we act on our anger, it's going to take us in a place that we don't need to be at, especially as Christians. Mm-hmm. So, um, let me see. So what motivated you to pursue ministry? And that kind of, that question kind of goes into what you just said, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say one word obedience. Mm. I had to obey. Um, again, I didn't want to go back to that, to that, to that, the hospital room. Yeah. I didn't want to go in a coffin. Because truth of the matter is, I believe that if I had not done what God said, because of my sonship, because of my relationship to God, mm. I believe he would have destroyed me. Mm. See, people, people don't believe that stuff. They don't. They don't. But sometimes if you're, if obedience is better than sacrifice. If we keep doing what we, what we want to do rather than what God wants us to do, he will get us. Just like a parent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep right on touching the stove. I done told you not to touch the stove. <laughs> okay. Put your hand on the eye. I done told you not to touch. Do not touch. It. It's going to be hot. If you put your hand up there, you're going to burn. Obedience. Mm-hmm. So we got to obey. That's what, that's what my answer would be. I, I did it out of, I, that's, that's my push to do it is obedience. And I do it because I'm obeying God, but also I'm using the principles that God has given me to do that. And that is preach his word. Mm. I love that because obedience is is definitely better than sacrifice. We can, we can sacrifice praise. We can sacrifice money. We can do it all, but it doesn't mean a thing if we're not being obedient to what God has told us to do. And I, I have followed, I, I've done that because God said, do it, but understand this. And I want you to, I want you to really catch what I'm about to say. Even if I don't pastor another church, I'm still going to have to preach. Mm. He called me to, pre- to, to pastor, but I'm still going to have to preach. You got to preach. Because he called me to preach. Preach the gospel yeah. in season, out of season. Out of season. <laughs> it don't care. Don't, don't, I, I don't care how many toes I step on. I'm going to give you what God say. But if I don't, if they release me tomorrow, Lord knows I don't want them to, but if they release me tomorrow, <laughs> I'm still going to have to give 
and portray and give people God's word. Mm -hmm. That's ministry. That's the call. Yeah, I feel, I feel you one hundred percent because it's like for me when I when I when I started um, preaching, I started preaching back in two thousand and thirteen or fourteen, mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I was called ever since I was eight years old. But I, mm -hmm. I first of all, when I was eight, was, was not thinking about nothing about church or, or anything like that. Right. I'm thinking about Power Rangers and toys and stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so um, I rejected it then because I was a kid. I mean, that's what kids do. We, we just reject everything. Peer pressure brings that too. So. Yeah, it does. It really does. Um, and then when I got to high school, I knew that, you know, I was, I, it was something different. My mom used to tell me all the time that, you know, God has, you know, big plans for you. And, you know, he's going to, you know, I used to play the drums at my church. So she would tell me all the time, God is going to bring you out from the drums. <laughs> he's going to use you. I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. And then when I went off to college, it, it was funny. When I went off to college, I went to Barton College. Okay. Um, and that's when really God just, you know, kind of like, all right, bro. Uh, you you can try to ignore this all you want, but I'm going to put you in some situations where you have to, you know, answer that, answer the call. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I answered it, but eventually I just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Cause I don't want to be that guy. I was so stuck on not being that guy. Mm -hmm. And it, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's my, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. But, <laughs> it, it. It's so profound. It's so profound. It's so profound. I could go into it, but we got, we got to keep moving. We got too much in common, man. Cause I was, I'm, I'm a drummer too. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so funny. It's, it's so funny. Like, I used to, I used to, I loved I wasn't the greatest, but I loved playing the drums. And I thought that, you know, if I just stayed there, I could get better, start going touring and everywhere. I, just, mm -hmm. I had big dreams, yeah. you know, and God was like, nah, bro, I got other dreams. I want you to preach. And there you go. There you go. It was funny because like you, you, you said you hit the nail on the head. It was like, I still got to preach either, even if I'm not a pastor at this church mm -hmm. no more. I still got to preach. And that's how I feel right now. Like, even though I don't have a church to pastor or I don't have um, you know, a, a, a pulpit to stand behind and preach. I still have to preach. You know, God gave me this platform with the podcast and the radio show. I still have to pro um, preach and proclaim the gospel. I still have to talk about these things that God had placed on my heart to talk about, mm -hmm. whether it steps on people's toes, whether it makes people uncomfortable. Right, right. Others, I still got to do it because God has placed that burden. I, don't, I, don't, I hate to call it a burden, but he placed that on me to do mm -hmm. it. And I hate to call it a burden because it's not a burden. It's more. It's more of a mantle. It's more of, a, and, and it can be a burden. It can be a blessing, but it's more of a mantle because you know, and that responsibility. Because I feel it when I don't say when I don't say the right things, or if I don't preach the right things, and people tell me all the time, they'll tell, they'll show me that I've I've didn't, I've didn't hit it right or something like that. Like I know that I'll catch that, and God will remind me too. It's like you're not hitting the mark right now. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's people paying attention. And you know, as a pastor, you say something left <laughs> in your congregation, the blood is on your hands if you lead them wrong, lead them astray. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I, I'm not a pastor or anything like that, but I take that um, to, into consideration as a preacher because the, the gospel message in and of itself is so important. It's so important to, mm -hmm. of course, salvation. But it's so important in this world today that we have to share that same gospel, that same gospel message, um, right. be consistent in that area. Mm -hmm. And I know that kind of didn't go with anything we were talking about, but I don't know. This is, I guess that's just the spirit just leading. <laughs> Slow with it, dog. <laughs> so have you ever wanted to, um, no, wait, I, was, I skipped the question. What motivates you now to continue in ministry? I know you said earlier um, that, uh, what your motivation for ministry was, but what con what what continues to motivate you to keep pressing on, or as Carl and Pearson <laughs> used to say, just keep on keeping on. <laughs> keep on keeping on. Um, two things: making sure that the saved continue to grow, mm -hmm. but also, secondly, to change the heart of the unsaved. Mm -hmm. I want to be an impact to the people that I serve as pastor or whoever I preach to. But I also want to give the word out so lives can be changed. Mm. It's not about a dollar. Right. Oh Lord, I'm about to get in trouble. Yeah, you it's are. not about a dollar. <laughs> it's not about fame or fortune. I don't have to be on the word network. Now, if God opened up that door, that's fine. But it's about 
helping the lives of those that are saved and helping to change the lives of those that are not saved. Mm. That's it. That's what keeps me going and obedience still. Um, again, I have to, I have to do what God calls me to do. And if I don't, I'm the one, like you just said, it's going to be blood on my hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a conversation with a pastor, um, earlier and he was saying the same thing and he, he was a pastor for over 40 years and he just recently, recently retired wow. and he shared with me something that was so profound. And he was just talking about, you know, his purpose for ministry was the people, you know, mm -hmm. and it's similar to what you said, it's the people. Uh, when you're a pastor over people, you know, over the flock that God has blessed you with, you know, it's important that you first, first of all, know those people. Right. <laughs> Second of all, it's important that you pastor them and, and build that relationship. Um, and that is so profound because we see so many of our, you know, pastors now that don't really have that relationship aspect with their, with their, um, their congregation. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, a take than it is a give and take relationship. And one of the things I love the most about, you know, my uncle and being at his church is that I see his heart daily, the way that he pastors. It, it is, it is amazing. And it has inspired me so much just to see how much that he pours into his saints, mm -hmm. not, not just, you know, giving them the word and, and spiritually, but the time that he invests in them. He literally, you know, he, he has a relationship with, he may not have a hundred members right now, but he has a relationship with every single member of his church and they respect him. They, they, they love him. They, you know, support him and everything that he does. And it's like, you know, I, I question, I don't say I question. I think about that often as, as a young minister, um, one could probably say aspire, aspiring pastor one day, <laughs> But, you know, I just question that I, I, or I think about that so much because. Just so you know, God just heard you. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't mean to go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you good. I told me to tell you he heard you. Just go ahead. Heard, oh, I appreciate that. I, I need that. You don't even know. You don't even know. You just spoke into something that I'm dealing with right now. He heard um, you. Just be, be steadfast. I, I am. I'm being steadfast and immovable. There you go. Okay, I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> But it's like, I, I, I look at that. I look at pastors and I look at their heart and what they need to, to do and, and to, to just to shepherd the, um, their flock mm -hmm. and just loving the people. That's what it's all about. It's about right. loving the people. You don't have to, you don't have to like people, but you got to love them. <laughs> it's a difference. Go with that. No. Go with that. No. You um, have to love them. I, I, I say this, that Love is what keeps us going, even mm. if they don't like you. Mm. If you love them and you love the H out of them, mm. that's all that matters. It don't matter what they do. It's all, it's all about what you do. Right. Um, I have right at 300 people in my church. Mm. I stood up one Sunday and told them all my cell phone number. Mm. I take another hour after service to sit around and just talk if they want to talk mm -hmm. because that's loving them. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to like it. Everybody's not going to see everything you do, mm -hmm. but people tell me I need to slow down because I do too much, but I do it because I love my people. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I do. I'm at, I'm at a lot of choir rehearsals. I attend most of the meetings in the churches because I just want to make sure that they see my face, know I'm here and everything else. And right now people are looking at me like, pastor, why are you doing all this stuff? Why? I mean, you we're in a pandemic, chill out. No, I, it still has to go on. It has to go. Even if I'm separated, man, I cry most of the time. Yes, I cry, but I cry a lot because I miss my people. Mm. And again, they ain't mine. I, I keep saying my people, but they, they, they're family to me. Yeah. We don't get along all the time. We fuss sometimes, mm -hmm. but I love them. And I, I want to see them all the time. But right now we're separate. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. 
I believe God did this on purpose to get our attention so we can focus back on him and not on the building, not on the people, not on the pulpit, not on the music. Come on, focus on him. Come on, Pastor. We're missing the mark because God is fed up with us trying to be popular. Come on, Pastor. He wants us to be about him. That mm-hmm. that's that second chronicle seven, if my people yeah, call by my name. And then on Matthew six, he said, he says, seek first the kingdom mm-hmm. of God and his right. It ain't them, them pretty all them number folk I just told you I had in my church, it doesn't even matter if I'm not loving them. Right? Right. So we all need to understand. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about we all need to understand that it's about love. It's not about that chick. It's not about cash, cars, clothes, cribs, and all that stuff. It's not about all that stuff. It's about God. Mm. And if we do what we're supposed to do, God will, will supply everything, needs and wants. Mm. But we're missing it. Mm. So I had again, a thank you. If I had a ham and B right now, I'd be <laughs> backing you up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you are a preacher. <laughs> Pastor. Pastor Pat Way. <laughs> Preach, boy. <laughs> my bag and everything. Lord Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Golly, boy. You just said a mouthful. It's so funny. Everything you said, you are literally echoing. This is how I know it's God, because you are literally echoing everything I've said in a um, podcast that I released earlier. Mm-hmm. And it's so profound. Like, I, I really truly believe, like, yes, we're in the last days, and I believe that this situation has kind of opened our eyes even more to, um, you know, us being closer to Jesus' return. That is not a, a lie. That is a true statement. Mm-hmm. But I truly believe just how quick this whole pandemic has started, how mm-hmm. everything has kind of shifted, um, how it has disrupted everyone's life not just the church everyone's right. life and how it has altered things mm-hmm. uh, we're in, we're now more in a place of uncertainty um than ever before we we can set deadlines to when okay we think that things are going to go back to normal by this time and it's every time we set a deadline what does god do push that thing right on back mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like even now like we 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 recently reopened the states and people have been going back to work kind of been doing their own thing and mm-hmm. the numbers have skyrocketed mm-hmm. since the beginning mm-hmm. and it's like i've been saying this from the jump i put facebook statuses out there i've been just I haven't shouting it from the mountaintops god is trying to tell us something right <laughs> And we got to just stop. Like we got to sit down and listen. We have to listen, heed the spirit, what he is saying in that moment, in this moment, in this season. Um, because just as, as quick as it has, it has yeah, as quick as, as it has came. When I get excited, I start getting. <laughs> All right. Just forgive me. As quick as it has came. I truly believe that God is going to take it away just like that too. I believe that. And I believe too that he, he's, he's, he's orchestrating this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Cause for the month, for the longest we've been so tied up on performance, we've been so tied up on coming to church every Sunday and being in the church house from 8 AM to 12 o'clock midnight, being in every single thing and, and just having so much pride in our church, having pride mm-hmm. in our denominations, having pride in, in, in being a, a big, great ministry. And it's like God has literally closed the doors of the church and right. told everybody to go outside and make disciples. <laughs> close the church, close the movie theaters, close uh, all places, a- everything. everything. And I, I do a call every morning, 645, Monday through Friday, called GIT, get it together. Mm-hmm. My subject this morning was lemonade. Mm. And I talked about how we react to issues, how we react to even a time like this. COVID-19 is a piece of lemon. Mm -hmm. Our responsibility is to add joy, peace, love to make the lemonade come. Mm -hmm. The lemons 
the sugar in the water. Mm -hmm. We're missing the mark because we're so con concerned about and looking at the numbers mm -hmm. and looking at COVID rather than trying to make lemonade out of sitting down and reading our Bible. This has given us more time to read, study, look at what God is doing. Mm -hmm. But we're so concerned about making sure we're looking at WRA or any other TV station to see what the numbers are looking like rather than saying, God, I want more of you. Mm -hmm. I've grown more in these last 15, 16 weeks, these last three, four months or whatever, more in these last few months than I have in a few years. I, I agree wholeheartedly. So we got to, we got to stop looking at the lemons and look at the lemonade. How are we going to make things better? Mm. Prepare for what, what God is about to do. Mm. Business owners, prepare your business plan during this time where you have nothing else to do but sit home. Exactly. But we're concentrating on everything else but that. So, but that, and and honestly, it it goes right back to what this the theme of this series is. What's your why? Find your why. Find your purpose. Right. Start working towards that thing, because what's to come is greater than what's been. We know that. That's Bible. <laughs> but what's to come? You you have to be in prepare. You have to be in preparation for what's to come. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit there with, you know, hands tied, doing nothing, just waiting for God to bless and waiting for God to do things. You know, you got to put forth the action in this, in this season. And I feel like with me doing this podcast, it's the same thing. I'm putting forth the action. I'm putting forth the things that I need to do to prepare me for the next level that God is going to put us at. And I'm, I, I'm not that person to be talking about levels and people, God taking us to new heights and deeper depths and all that stuff. But I, I truly believe that the next place that we're going, God has given us this time to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been saying that for so long. God knows. And <laughs> if you're faithful over a few things, he's going to make you rules over many. Over many. If you're faithful over your podcast and your radio show, you might go national. The right person might see it. The right person. And the, and the thing is, that's not even... It is it's a goal, mm -hmm. but it's not my heart right now. Right I, now, my heart is for the people. I got that. But mm -hmm. God will take what He's placed in your heart mm -hmm. and make it bigger when you have done what He told you to do. I love and I received that. I received that. I received that. Because it's like, you know, one of the things that a lot of pastors have said that um that I've talked to, you know, they're like, I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Lord this needs that. to be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. This needs this is needed in a time like today, not just because of the racial tensions that we have going on and everything like that, but because the body of Christ has been so divided for so long. Like we have to have these conversations. We have to come together. And I think that, you know, when God gave me this vision, a, it won't even that long ago, but I, I, for some reason I said a long time ago. But when God gave me this vision, it's, it's been literally pressing on my heart to do it. And that's mm -hmm. how I know it's this God, because whenever he, he gives me something, he he troubles my spirit. He, <laughs> he will beat me down until I do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's like, you know, it's so important that we have to band together under the one faith. I, don't, I hate to say one faith movement, but what one faith is about, because we are... The Bible says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's right. That's Bible. Yep. I'm not trying to come and do anything that has not been written because this has been written for over 2,000 years. Right. right. <laughs> right. Well, technically under 2,000 years if you're a biblical expert and know when the Bible was constructed and canonized and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that it, I'm, not, so I'm not saying anything that, has, that God hasn't already ordained that God hasn't already mandated. Mm -hmm. So our time is just about to wrap up. And uh, we, I guess that's what happens when two preachers get on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> just go off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how, do you have, a, you have a little bit more time or do you have a hard stop at one? I'm, whenever you're ready. I'm good. Okay. Have you ever wanted to quit ministry or so why? Yes. Um, you were like the. It's funny you you said that so fast. You're like the second pastor I talked to that said that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have wanted to quit ministry mm -hmm. um, numerous times. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it came from people. Mm. Um, some people have that Jezebel spirit. Mm. Some people can't take God talking to somebody else besides them. Mm. Some people don't know how to be pastored. They've always been in charge. Matter of fact, some of them are not with their spouse now because they didn't know how to work together. Mm. Um, and they get on us. Like I said earlier, we bleed. Mm -hmm. We have bad days. We want to go off and sometimes feel like cussing. Yep. But right after that, mm -hmm. God sends me a message through another member. Mm -hmm. And they just say, Pastor, I'm proud of what you're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it has to be God because he know I'm frustrated. Yeah. I'm behind my desk at the church with my head between my, my hands. What am I going to do now? I'm mm -hmm. ready. I want to pack all my stuff. But God sends a message from anybody He's tell, to tell me he still has me. So, yes, I want to quit. Matter of fact, I, one year I wanted to quit 365 times. <laughs> Every day. Every day. <laughs> Every day. But God knows how to fix the situation, bring it down, mm -hmm. and allow it to work out in our favor. Yes, he does. No matter what they've done, they want. No matter how they how they treat you, man. I've been mm, yes. God know how to work it out. Mm -hmm. And one of the one of the worst things you can do to a pastor, oh my God, is to compare that pastor to somebody else. For real, you're right. What happens if your spouse compares you to one of her old boyfriends? Come on. Yeah. Somebody got to see these hands. <laughs> Bless you, sir. 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 I ain't got right. no water, but I'll put some water on you. Right. But I mean, you right. gotta be I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not good to do that. But it right. happens. It happens. Right. Like the first one happened to us. Sure, ain't gonna be the last. You are right. But we we have to learn how to keep ourselves calm. That's key. That's key. And sometimes you got to deal with them. You got to have a thick skin. And don't cry in front of them. Go away. Go somewhere. Because mm -hmm. they're going to take that kindness, that, that crying for weakness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I have, well, God, yes, I want to. Yeah. But God, I, yes. Yeah. I know for, um, for me and being in ministry, I've been ordained for, um, I've been saying three years, but I think it's really been two. Mm -hmm. Um, and just everything that I have been through these last couple of years is I've been like, God, I, I why did I pursue this? <laughs> why did I want to, why did I want to do this? You asked, uh, what is your why? Uh, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why? Why God? But it's like, you know, and every single time I've asked why God always gives me an answer to ask to why. Mm -hmm. Um, and that answer honestly has been shown to me more more times than anything because every time that I see an issue or a problem, it's like, and I just go to and complain to God about it. The first thing He says is, "That's why I called you because mm -hmm. I need you to be better than that." Right. And this is why I'm showing you. This is why I'm taking you through it. God, thank you. That's why I'm I'm giving you this much headache. Because I need you to be better than that, than that example that you see. And that, right, that kind of spoke to my situation right now. That's my signal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that all up. Right? Yeah, I feel it right now because it's like, you know, every single time, you know, we, we, we question and we ready to quit. Like you said, God always sends a message. And I had, <laughs> I had preached that, that. I tell the same stories over and over. That, you do first time, first time you're hearing it. <laughs> but I've told, I preached a message back in January to, uh, I used to do college uh, college ministry um, at NC State um, at my last church. And 
Um, they gave me an opportunity to come back and speak. Um, and I told the college students, I came from Philippians 4, um, and in that entire message, basically, basically the, the message was about God having a gift for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that you don't get excited about the gift. You get excited about the giver. You get excited about the giver because they were obedient to God and blessed you in a time of need. You're in a time of need and you're going through some things, but you're not excited about God actually blessing you with that gift. You're excited about the fact that that person was faithful enough to God that they listened to God and blessed you in that time. Because when you look at that scripture, that entire scripture, I just preached the whole chapter and what Paul was going through. He was struggling because he was incarcerated um, mm-hmm. and he was going through one of the worst times in his life. And honestly, he he penned some of the most beautiful stuff while he was incarcerated. And then that entire that entire chapter chapter is just so weighty and it's so fine. Mean, I don't mean to put this plug in. My my bro, he preached this initial sermon last night and he came from he came from that exact um scripture. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He came from that exact scripture. And I was like, come on, God, I see you. And it was just, and it was just like you know when when that happens, you know you get excited about the person being obedient to God in that moment because they don't they don't know what you're going through they don't know what's going on they just they're just excited about giving you something that is going to help you in this season and. It, it, it it's like God answering. A, it's definitely God answering a prayer. And you gonna say it's like it's definitely God answering a prayer to a long-awaited situation that you've been waiting for Him to answer. But the fact of the matter is, He has to. The way that He answers it, you can't get excited about the actual gift. It's like when someone gives you money, you can't get excited about the fact that oh, someone gave me a thousand dollars. Yes, it's not that. It's the fact that. I was so, I'm in this point in my life where I don't know where the next bill is going to, how the next bill is going to get paid. I don't even know how I'm going to make it. And God spoke to a person way out yonder (laughs) and told them to go and see about (laughs) T. And the fact that they went to go see about you, not only does that excite you about them, um, being obedient to God, but it excites you that that God is listening to you, mm-hmm. and that in and of itself is just powerful. It's just powerful. All right, let's keep moving because I, I I always do that <laughs> because it's it's not just it's not just helping them, but it's helping you and me. It do, right, it does, it does, and it and it, it it's so profound. It's so profound. That's why I get excited now when people like just when they say something nice about the podcast. I'm not even I'm not even happy about you know I'm going I'm doing a good job. I'm just happy that you know you taking the time to listen to it and you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my gift. It's my gift to the world, and I'm excited that y'all enjoy it. So, um, how can your why inspire someone else to find their why? Um. I guess that answer is back with Paul. Yeah. He's the one said it, and I'm just following it. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to follow me with it. Um, so I just want to show them that, show, show anybody that God's word is still true. It's all yeah. about what God wants. And as long as we understand it's all about God, God what God wants, then everything else is going to fall into place. Um, I want to be an inspiration to somebody else to let them know also that even though you messed up, God can still build you up. Yeah. That's good. The past doesn't always, your past doesn't have to be your present or your future. It needs to stay in the past. Yeah. Learn from it and move forward. Yeah. So that's that's, how that's, that's what it's all about. Just moving forward. That's that's the only way we're gonna get anywhere anywhere in life. We got to move on. Got to move forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, how can someone find their purpose in God and in this life? Mm. See God. Mm. 
um, we have to pray. We have to yep. talk to God. We have mm -hmm. to study his word. We have to um, marinate in his word. The only way you can season a good steak is if you really let it marinate. The word mm -hmm. has to marinate in us. And we lose that because oftentimes the only time a preacher studies is when he's about to preach. Mm -hmm. When in all actuality, you ought to be getting better and finding purpose in your life by finding God's word and applying it to your life. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I believe totally that my, a person can find their purpose only in God. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing it, you're trying to find your purpose in anything else, you're doing it the wrong way. Yeah. If you, if you are in ministry and that's your purpose, God ought to be that the thing that's pulling you through it. Again, not a dollar, mm -hmm. not a nice looking car, not a big house. It's not about that. It's about us finding our purpose and what God wants for us to do. Press toward the mark of a higher calling. Yeah. We talked in the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is about us and our salvation. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, we're at the close <laughs> of this great, right? <laughs> we're at the close of this great service. I, I had a good time. I, I I really had a good time. This is this is really good. I, I love your spirit and I love I love what you I love what you're about, what you're doing. That you you've inspired me and have encouraged me today. Oh, so wow. I I thank you because it, just dealing with some things and you know just this conversation alone has has, has helped me um, grow in areas that you know I I've needed. So I I appreciate that from you, Pastor. Don't my, head, my head was a little bit like a mess right now, but but don't don't allow what yeah. you're dealing with to affect your praise. Mm. It can it, when you're angry, it can make you want to say some stuff and do some things. Mm -hmm. But God's going to be the one that's going to pull you through it, man. Yeah, I just want you to. I just wanted to give that to you as well. He already has worked it out. You just have to be patient to let him go ahead and take care of it. Yeah. Revel the revelation is going to come to you. Mm -hmm. It's just up to you to just have patience. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that, and that's true. That is true. You just got to have patience and wait on the Lord. Absolutely. <laughs> wait on the Lord. Yes, be of good strength. Be of good courage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, where can um where can people find you, Pastor, and connect with you and your ministry? Um, just run down your church where they can listen to you on a weekly basis. Basis, uh, if they're in the Rocky Mount area, how can they find you and love on you and connect with you? Ivory Hill Baptist Church is the name of the church. The address is forty five zero five Medoc Mountain Road, Enfield, North Carolina, uh, two seven eight two three. Um, we are in the Meet Out Mountain community, country church, country church. We out in the country, country, country. <laughs> Thank God he's blessed us. Um, you can find us currently services at 930 every Sunday morning um, by way of Facebook and a conference call line. I'm actually getting ready to get back on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We also have Sunday school at 9 a.m. right before the worship service. Cool. Find me on Facebook at Felix Petaway. F E L I X P E T T E W A Y, or you can find us um, also on Facebook at Ivory Hill BC. Um, I'm on Instagram at Felix underscore Petaway, and also Twitter at Ivory Hill BC um, on Twitter. Love it. We do, we do a, again, I'll put this plug in there. We do a GIT, get it together call every weekday on month, on month from every weekday from 6 45 to 7. Mm hmm. It's an encouraging word just to get people ready for whatever they're getting ready to challenge in their day that day. Um, and weekly Bible enrichment on Wednesdays at 7. So that's what we do.